morning everybody it's becoming a really 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 nice morning here still I like the frostiness in the morning and then it gets warm in the afternoon that's actually probably my favorite time of the year so yeah uh, let's see how many Europa League results I do remember. I actually did watch slash listen to a conference uh, goal zone on the zone uh, where you know I got a little bit of the action especially of the first few games. The second uh, uh, set I did not realize as many but you know I at least watched some highlights, I watched all the results, I won't remember all the ones. Uh, the one thing that stuck out for me the most before I go into individual games is that it was not a day for the French teams. They already had a pretty bad first day and yesterday the only team that actually made point was Marseille. 1-1, 2-2 one, one, uh, uh, at the Pablo Limassol uh, after being 2-0 up. Uh, which I honestly have to say is disappointing. In a way, especially in that group with uh, Lazio and Frankfurt. Go right to the game afterwards. Now Marseille has only a single point, the same as Limassol. So mm -hmm. you put yourself in a corner there. And yeah, the other French teams, Bordeaux, I think, lost at home to Copenhagen, if I'm not totally mistaken. And Rennes lost at Astana to nothing. It's not, it was not a day for French teams, uh, but it was a day for German teams. Uh, that we can wholeheartedly say, German team performed very well. We had, uh, and was also the thing that I, goals only is mostly Germany, so they put focus on German matches. Uh, we have Eintracht against Lazio, which was the big late game in a way, where Eintracht won 3-1, uh, or 4-1 even, 4-1. Uh, got a relatively early lead. It was a beautiful goal. I liked how it hit the crossbar and went in. Um, Lazio seemed to get a little bit of traction with uh, the counter-attack of Parolo and Immobile. There were some discussions whether there were, uh, Lucas handled the ball before that. But I honestly think this was not, you know, if it Penalties have been given for such a foul, but I don't think it was that big, big of a uh, misgiving. Sorry, you see only one of the suns right in my face, which is, you know, sun is nice. So they got the equalizer, but Frankfurt just at that moment swiftly got the lead again um, and asserted themselves. And yeah, yeah. people are really nervous anxious to get to work <laughs> but I understand it if, if the, there was a, a, a light turn green and someone really slowly got started it, uh, this is one of the most frustrating things to me too so I'm not gonna pretend that I'm uh, way above that I'm not uh, so Frankfurt was 2-1 in lead and then just before halftime was a yellow red for Lazio given and at that point you never had the idea that uh, Lazio is gonna go back into the match. Um, they tried of course but uh, I think 52nd, 53rd somewhere there. Uh, Eintracht got another goal. 3-1 that was that and then another Lazio player was sent off <laughs> in stoppage time to make it 4-1. Uh, I think this was one of those nights where nothing, uh, absolutely nothing was going for Lazio. Uh, at every juncture when you thought you could get something, uh, either you gave up a goal or uh, the referee sent the player off. So forget about it. I also didn't like the game from an aesthetic point of view. I really hate the all black kids by Eintracht Frankfurt. They are to me so nondescript, but seemingly I had the feeling that um, the fans are getting behind the black look because if I look at the stands, it was almost a blackout. 
which is something you know in American sports they usually make a white out or you know everyone uh, or orange or red or whatever. Um, I never, I don't think I've seen a blackout, but it might, surely might have happened at some point. So yeah, that was the big game uh, in the evening. Um, let's go to through some other evening results. There was, uh, I think, Chelsea. Uh, got a narrow victory goal by Morata, which was well taken, I gotta say, but he missed earlier chances. But finally, Morata is back on the scoring sheet against F FC Vidi, or I still call them Vidi Oton, um, I shot the other day the jersey review of this group, and yeah. It's an interesting group, but I think it all, it's already pretty much, I don't want to say decided, but it's clear where this group is going. Uh, with also Pauk winning at Bate 4-1, very happy about that result. Uh, that's, that's a commanding result against a team that had already three points. Uh, Pauk, of course, lost uh, at home to uh, Chelsea, which is not that was not that big of a surprise. Uh, so for that reason, I think yeah, that group will be Chelsea and Pauk advancing. Of course, uh, Vidi, or Vidi Oton has now the chance in two games against Pauk to maybe get something going. They were actually uh, pretty pesky in Champions League qualifying. I think they made it to the final round. So uh, don't discount the Hungarians, honestly, but it's also clear who is the favorite going forward. So yeah, that was that group. Uh, the other, yeah, the, the other big results were the, I think Group G, uh, where um, Villarreal and Spartak. It was played in Moscow, so Spartak Villarreal uh, played a 3-3 draw. I think Spartak was two. Nothing up, Villarreal turned it all around, Spartak got the late, late equalizer. Didn't see the highlights, but saw uh, the result. I think that's a big one. It's, I think it's also a lucky result for the Austrian team in the Group Rapid, which uh, lost to the Glasgow Rangers. Uh, yeah, I think it was a fall. At the moment, the Rapid is in a, a really, really bad shape, but so is uh, are, are the Rangers. And it was, uh, as we will see soon, it was uh, Glasgow versus Austria. They, I really thought that Rapid should get a result at Rangers if they wanted any chance of progressing. They said they're gonna put the focus on the Europa League. Yeah, they got the lead through a goal that should never, 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 ever have been given. I mean the. The linesman is standing right at the line and the rapid player is about a meter, meter and a half offside. I mean, cannot be more obvious, he's right in front of his face and he, he doesn't give it. I, maybe it's because it's so close in your face that uh, the field of vision is obstructed, but that was it should never have been given. The Rangers quickly uh, answered. Uh, from what I got, the first half was a rather even affair with Rapid even actually fighting, but then it was all Rangers afterwards, and Rangers ended up being comfortable 3-1 winners. Um, it's also in, in, interesting because Rapid playing in green and white, of course, like Celtic, but I, they've been playing with green pants, so I think they tried to avoid a little bit the Celtic look all over because they are strapped and Celtic has the hoops. I think it was probably easy for uh, Rangers fans to Get against the Rapid. Yeah, that was, I think, a blow. If Rapid would have ever had a chance of advancing, I mean, they're still sitting now second place, but then two games against Villarreal where I don't see them doing much. So I think they are pretty much, with that result, they are a little bit out of contention. Yes, they got the win against Spartak Moscow, but no. Uh, I think that is it what I remember of the evening games. I remember more about the uh, uh, earlier games uh, where, of course, uh, let's Austria against Glasgow, uh, Celtic were host to Salzburg, which in every regard was the better matchup of the two. Uh, Salzburg 
is becoming a European force. The Europa League, they always perform well in there. It was even to the degree where I said, I'd rather have Salzburg play in the Europa League. I don't want them in the Champions League because they make way less points. They have, they're sitting now again on six points, beating Glasgow Celtic, I should say, 3 1. And yeah, first half, uh, Celtic got a very, very early lead. Um, and Salzburg needed to get going, but once I got rolling in the second half, there was no turning back. Uh, I think within five minutes they turned the game around 2 1 and then I made 3 1. Uh, Dabur scoring twice, uh, one from a penalty where a Celtic player was sent off because the Salzburg player was through a goal. Um, it was interesting to see that Salzburg was playing in the red jerseys, which actually makes a lot of sense against the white Celtic jerseys. This was actually a nice color matchup. Uh, speaking, yeah. And the other game was Wolfsburg against Leipzig, where Leipzig got back in in business, uh, being up 3 nothing relatively quick. Trons are pulling one back in a rainy, rainy, rainy day. I have to ask my company colleagues in Trons whether anyone was there. Yes. My company where I'm working, I often have to deal with our staff in Toronto, so that's actually interesting. Um, well, before we go to the, the game that I really cared about, let's uh, talk about quickly the games of the German teams. Oh no, no Arsenal won, made a 3 0 win uh, at Karabakh, which at uh, long times was a rather even contest. But yeah, it was a rather even contest, but then it did not go anywhere. Just had to tell, this idiot was cutting right in front of me. Uh, you know. But our sign up with comfortable three. Three nothing winners. Um, I remember the result from the late games. I think Kiev played a two two, uh, two, -two uh, draw against um, uh, what was the Yablonets. You know, I, I have I know roughly all the groups, but it's all a blur at the moment. So. So yeah, uh, Leverkusen have made a mess against Ajax Larnaca, uh, they went behind 1-0, I think they slowly turned around early in the second half, they were up 2-1, made it 3-1 and then a horrible defensive error just when stoppage time started 3-2 uh, and right after that they made it 4-2. It was really, there were three goals in a very short succession, uh, I think from the 85th to the end of the game, so uh, that was really uh, interesting. Uh, in the same game, Lule Goretz lost at home. Um, who is the other team in that group? Uh, I'm totally blanking on that one. But yeah, that group is also, I mean, the two teams now at six points. Uh, that is not going uh, anywhere. I really cannot recall that. But, uh, Zurich, Zurich. FC Zurich. Won that one. Uh, by the way, if you haven't seen uh, the first game where uh, FC Zurich won in Larnaca, the penalty celebration where a guy jumps into the ditch behind the goal, not knowingly. Uh, <laughs> that's a horrible thing <laughs> to happen. Yeah, and then we are already at the group that I cared most about, but I saw actually least. <laughs> In a way, but I, that was the first highlights I went to Milan Olympiacos, of course. Uh, the parallel game uh, was, of course, the Dude Lange lost 3 0 at Betis, to be expected. I saw that Betis played in the um, light green shirts, which gave an interesting look to the game, I have to say. Uh, I don't, and I want to say Dude Lange played, played in the yellowish. But I'm not 100% but I, I made a note that uh, Betis is playing in the third jerseys, the ones with the 
cityscape. I think by now you've seen the highlight re uh, the um, jersey review. A uh, really, really nice, nice kit. Uh, very interesting to look at. And then, yeah, I was quite nervous about Milan Olympiakos. Uh, Milan, I would say, is the better team. I don't know how serious they take the Europa League. And I just saw when I started watching, listening, you know, putting the kids to bed, was half watching, half listening. I saw Milan was 1 0 down, and it was unfortunately not in defeat, really. Um, when I saw the highlights of Bonaventura, could have scored a goal, if not Kaya Kaun, who was offside, blew the, across the line, and then it would have been uh, probably a different game uh, after five minutes up. But yeah, Olympiakos scores early on, uh, and I really thought, oh, you know. I rate Milan higher than Olympiakos, but Olympiakos is one of those te teams that is very pesky. And, uh, given the performances of Greek teams, yes, uh, Ajax did not perform well in Amsterdam, but you know they made it to the Champions League. Hauk uh, only at the last stage faltered, and Olympiakos again qualified. I mean, they are a known commodity, so the Greek teams are not to be discounted and with a Milan team that actually tries to play nice soccer, I give it to them, but still trying to get their footing a little bit, uh, such a pesky opponent is not what you, it's really hard to play, let's let, but it's not that I don't want to play it, because you have to play the games that are put in front of you. So yeah, uh, one nothing down at halftime and I thought of, they are losing this one now uh, and then having two games against Betis. Not that everything's lost, but that's exactly the type of situation that I don't want to have. Uh, I honestly, I don't think Milan will win the Europa League. But that's the one trophy that they're missing. I really want that they, for once, win this competition. And they also have all three. Yes, Cup winners, Cup winners. I still count this. There are only, th I think, four teams that won have won all. That's uh, Barcelona, Ajax, Bayern, and Juventus. So, for that reason, I would love it. I, I know that Inter has won the UEFA Cup, the only UEFA Cup uh, thrice, but they never won the Cup Winners' Cup. So, that would also be a nice thing that Milan can. Anyway, European trophies are always nice and sometimes this actually can be, can be an easier route to the Champions League. Uh, I think for Atleti last year, I mean they would have so, uh, qualified for Champions League in, anyway, but uh, it was pretty much pretty determined that Atleti is going to win. I was gutted when Arsenal beat Milan hand handily because at that moment I really thought that Milan is the better team. But yeah, that's how it goes. So yeah, I really thought, yeah, Milan sucks, but they turn it around within 10 minutes from the 70th to the 80th. Kudrone coming in, Cialanoglu coming in, uh, actually, you know, Cialanoglu was hit and miss uh, the last few weeks, the last few games, I should say. Uh, against Roma in the first half, he was uh, absolute commanding. And other times he just didn't show up, so so he didn't play, but he came in and actually gave Milan the spark, made a beautiful cross to Cudrone, made a, a two one uh, by Iguain, a really nice assist, and Iguain, like a striker does, got the defender on the wrong foot and then had easy shot into goal, and then Cudrone again. 3-1. Uh, I was relieved. This was the this was the type of result that Milan desperately needed to get. So yes, uh, the jersey matchup there was also interesting because we had Milan play in their home jerseys and then Olympiacos in the red and white. But you know they have the red shoulders and then the white uh, white jersey and then uh, red pants, it was a little bit confusing. I love my Milan in uh, white pants. I think they were playing with black socks, which uh, is also look alike better actually with white socks, to be honest with you. But uh, 
yesterday I think it's exactly the weird look that uh, dark and white so kind of a reddish and white and white and red that doesn't mix well and that was borderline to be honest with you I think that Milan probably should have played with black pants and I know I don't like this look uh, that much but I think it would have made more sense yesterday but yeah Milan is has six points, sits pretty at the top of the group. Uh, Betis has four, and it's Olympia. I think I'm appointed Olympiacos, so looking comfortable to me, honestly, and I'm happy about that. So uh, that was the game I really cared most about. Yes, of course, you watch the Austrian uh, games. I wish I would have seen anything of uh, Pauk. See much of those guys. I saw the goals. Uh, and yeah, I think of all the Italian teams in the competition, only the only one that has not won a thing is Lazio. Other than that, Italy had a wonderful week in the European competition. So also the German teams. I think the uh, Bayern was the one that was disappointing. Yeah, Hoffenheim, but Hoffenheim, that bad was not a lot of disappointment losing to Manchester City. And yeah, at least the English teams made up for big losses yesterday. Well, that's it from me. Let me know which games you watched, what you thought about all these uh, results. Um, as I said, there are too many games I cannot remember all, all of them, that's why I'm picking just a few. Um, but you know, let, let know what you watched, what you saw, um, whether you enjoyed this. I honestly, I know it's not the best competition, but I enjoy the hell out of the Europa League. Uh, it's on to me because there more, there's more very, very variation, so it's more interesting in a way. So yeah, give me a thumbs up if you liked that video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.